Listen, listen, 11 a.m. is early in the morning. I don't care. But this is still the Venom 2 Million Show. What is going on, my people, my party people? Welcome to the Venom 2 Million Show. This is episode two, second week, second week. Oh, my gosh. December 23rd in the morning, 11 a.m. Welcome. You're listening to me on BeMoreRadio.com or you're listening on my YouTube channel. And if you're listening on my YouTube channel, I'm saying this on the show. You only got one more week. Only got one more week. Then you're you going to have to go to BeMoreRadio.com 11 a.m. every Saturday to partake in the Venom 2 Million radio show. Yes, yes. So, guys, we got a good show lined up. You know, lined up. I said lined up, but lined up. It's a good show lined up, y'all. We're going to be talking about some of this Venom information, this Venom movie stuff. We got a little bit of stuff in, in terms of technology, and we're going to talk about this wonderful, wonderful Star Wars information. I'm going to talk a little bit about some Resident Evil gaming stuff and all that. And, yeah, so it's got a, we got a good show lined up, a good show. Yes, but before we even get to going, go, 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 we got to take a break real quick. <laughs> but Venom to Man Show will be right back here on BeMoreRadio.com. Be More Radio is at the 2017 Shell Eco event. Here are some highlights. This is our future. Join the sites and all that. Seeing all the cars. Uh, it's our first year competing. Uh, we started about seven months ago. We started building our car uh, about the end of February. So. <laughs> yeah, it took us two months to go from nothing to having a car out here. You know, it's a lot of hard work. You got to be able to stick it through because once you get to the end, you're going to be glad you stuck it through. You know what I mean? It's pretty amazing. I, I, I've seen this event, but I've never been here. So it's kind of cool to to be hands-on and I, I wish that I was um, staying for the weekend I would definitely come and check it out you see the kids that come here right and and not only are they participating in the interactive stuff around the future of sustainability but they see all of these teams and they see the, again the effort and and the passion that they have and I do think it's life-changing for a lot of kids that see this we're definitely still learning and hopefully next year we can we can start fresh and do even better. Yeah, like the magnitude of this event was much bigger than I even imagined. What I've seen is that from last year to this year, we are we trained ourselves a, a lot better to understand how we can uh, inspect these team these teams and, and learn about their issues quickly. He didn't get to drive last year since it was his first year. This year he's driving. But for me, it, I was a proud parent to see him participate, to see something come from some just some metals and pieces into a, a product of a car um, that took them what 107 miles to the gallon last year so i was definitely proud of to see what they accomplished he dropped basketball which he had been playing for the past six years and started auto mechanics and he's wonderful at it he's their electrical person so yeah i'm really proud plus he's an ab honor roll student with honors classes and ap classes so very proud it was like an ocean a, 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 a earth it was so far i was like i was out of earth up top of the thing, and I had one in a tunnel. When we were watching the races and building the little mini cars and the VR goggles. Be more radio. Thanks, Shell Oil, for allowing us to be at their event. You're listening to the baseline to the city's rhythm. Be more radio. Ow! And do we all back? To the Venom Dumelian Show. I am your host, Venom Dumelian. Yes, I am. Uh, now, I would like to start this show off because I am Venom Dumelian. I would like to start this show off with some information about the Venom movie. And it was an interview because I, I was going to just go into it. But no, I'm going to give you a little bit of information. There was an interview between Matt Tomic, if you don't know who that is. He is the producer for the Venom film, one of the producers for the Venom film. Um, it was an interview between he and another man. A uh, man from MTV Movie News. Um, and the question I was asked was, is this in the Marvel Cinematic Universe? Is the Venom movie in the Marvel Cinematic Universe? And, well, Matt Tomic's answer, well, I'll just, I'll just let you listen to the clip. We're going to roll the whole clip. Can we talk Venom for a second? Because there's, there's some news that's starting to come out about him. First of all, just clarify something for me, because there's been a lot of back and forth. Is this set in the MCU? Is it set in the Spider-Man universe? Where does this We are get? making a Venom movie. Is what I'm going to say to you. Okay. I'm making a Venom movie okay. with Tom Hardy, um, and I think you will be very pleased. 
in Venom's in Tom Hardy's world is Peter Par- is Peter Parker swinging around some somewhere? We're making a Venom. Movie. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, and and I'm excited for people to explore and figure out what that is. What is but, uh, yeah? What is Tom bringing to this? Because he's one of the best actors we have today. He's such a visceral performer. I'm just curious what he's what he's what doing. He brings. I mean, Eddie Brock is an incredible character yeah. and a gritty, real, authentic. Um, funny but also embittered character and a truth teller who has made mistakes and you know Tom it's like a master class watching him act every day and he's such a risk taker um, and he loved this character from the day that we you know first met with him you know my partner Avi Arad and I we found someone who just just believed in this in this character entirely and yet you know every day pushes it to a place that us mere mortals would never, you just would never expect it to go. And he he, he just has crazy integrity about it. Yeah. Um, and so he challenges everything we're doing in the, in the most brilliant way. Um, yeah, he's not a paycheck job kind of guy. When he gets no, in it, I so... Mean, for him, it's like, I, if I'm going to do this, I'm going to do it and do it and give it its due. Because, you know, the love that the fans have for that character is is profound um, and he shares it so it's 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 really exciting and I don't want to say too much no I couldn't be more excited yeah. but yeah. eventually we'll reveal things and, and it will be uh, special one last question I'm just curious are you shooting for a PG-13 because that's a, it's a character you can say pretty extreme you could do an R-rated version ostensibly you could you could do you could do either one you could do either one and uh, what are you shooting and we're gonna do the right one we're gonna get to <laughs> All right, now, now y'all heard that, okay? Now, let me just break everything that we just learned from this wonderful interview down. First of all, the first question that is asked is, listen, Matt, hey, Maddie, is uh, the Venom movie in the MCU? Now, Matt, him being the producer, him being this wonderful suit, you know, because that's what producers are. They're the suits. They're the people with the money. They're the, they're, the, they're the people that say, this is what's going to happen, director. And I've hired you to do this job. And actor, guess what? This is what's going to happen. So he answers with, we're making a Venom movie. Yes, this is a Venom movie. Yep, this this is a Venom movie. And the, the question was, is the Venom movie in the Marvel Cinematic Universe? And Matt Talmick says, we're, we're making a Venom movie. We're, yes, we're, we're making a Venom movie. Now, he doesn't say it as condescending. and uh, it, Like the article, one of the articles that I read, uh, and even some videos I've seen on YouTube talking about this, it's, it's almost like it's... it's it's written or, or the, the perspective that people are taking from Matt Tomick's comments are as if he is dodging the question in a negative way. I think I think what he's doing is he's not answering the question intentionally because we will see, you know, and, and it's 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 also getting us to talk about it. Like, sure, it would get us to talk about it if the if he confirmed whether or not the movie was in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Um, but I think that w- by him leaving it ambiguous, it is even more of a talking point because the possibility of it being in the Marvel Cinematic Universe is there, which is great because people want to see it in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. And I'll tell you right now, we're going to just go straight into my thoughts on this right now. Then we're going to I'm going to break down other things that he said within the interview. But my thoughts and if you've watched my YouTube channel and if you haven't, uh, hi, I'm Venom 2 million. I'm Venom. I'm Venom. You know, I'm Venom 2 million. I love the character Venom. I love Spider-Man. I love all that. Um, and I've been covering Spider-Man and stuff on YouTube for a, quite a while. And and those that watch me know that I have a pretty good intuition with some things. I have pretty good intuition. It, it's just intuition. Um, and earlier in the summer, when this movie was announced earlier last summer, I guess the past summer, the summer of 2017, Amy um, Pascal, she in an interview was talking about the Venom movie. And she referenced it or phrased her what she said in re- in reference while referencing the Venom movie made people think, oh, wait a minute. <laughs> Did she just confirm that this movie is in the Marvel Cinematic Universe? And then Kevin Feige, who is the executive producer and well, was the executive producer. Now he's the head of Marvel Studios. We talked about him last week. He's the person in charge of Marvel Studios. Uh, he was looking, you know, just looking. <laughs> he was, and the people memefied it like like he was looking confused and stuff. But I I still don't think he was confused. I think he was just looking like, uh, okay, she's she's talking. 
Um, but Amy Pascal's response to the, or, or when she was talking about the Venom movie, her response, it almost was like, yeah, this movie is a part of the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Um, then it was cleaned up a little bit later on with Amy Pascal saying that it that at one point her saying that it isn't at one point saying that it's a part of the Marvel Universe, like the X-Men movies are a part of the Marvel Universe, um, things like that. And now Matt Tomic, he's straight up saying, listen, we're making a Venom movie. OK, it's 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 a Venom movie. All right. Now, I think that the purpose of them being so coy. I'll tell you right now. I'll tell you. And I've said it on my channel before. I think the purpose of them being coy is, is to drive the attention toward the movie. Because if the movie is in the Marvel Cinematic Universe, it's great. If it isn't, yeah. Oh, no. Oh, boo, hoo, 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 hoo. But I don't think that the movie is not in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. And I don't think that it is. I, and I've said this. I think that the movie is connected to the Tom Holland Spider-Man movies. But it won't be connected to the larger Marvel Cinematic Universe. And they won't need to talk about that. Because it's going to be taking place in a different location than Spider-Man uh, Homecoming and things like that. Um I'll extrapolate a little bit more to condense it, break it down for you. Think about it like this, right? The Venom movie has a 30-year-old Eddie Brock. And we know now Spider-Man and Spider-Man Homecoming, he's 15, 16. What if the Venom, what if within the Venom movie, Spider-Man, because Spider-Man, I'm assuming, does exist. And we he that question is even asked, um, and I'll get into that in a moment. But Spider-Man, what if the Spider-Man exists in the Venom movie and this Spider-Man is like 20-something, right? He's 20. You're 20 year old Spider Man. So then we go, oh, that's not that's not Tom Holland. No, 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 no. But what if this is Tom Holland's Spider Man, but at a later age? What if the Venom movie is like a sequel, sequel, sequel to the Spider Man franchise? And we won't know that until Spider Man is introduced. And when Spider Man is introduced, we see that it is Tom Holland Spider Man. And that that Spider Man, uh, that the Spider Man that we see in the Venom movie is a older Spider-Man, but the same Spider-Man. You get what I'm saying? That's a lot of Spider-Mans, Spider-Men. How many times did I say that word? A lot. But I think that a great way to do that is by making the movie take place in a different location in comparison to the Homecoming franchise. Uh, we see that it, the movie is taking place in San Francisco. Uh, you do that. And you don't necessarily have to answer the question whether or not the movie is in the Marvel Cinematic Universe because it's basically going to be left to the perception and interpretation of the audience. Because things will be, it, it, you don't need to say, hey, Iron Man exists in this universe, especially if he doesn't. There's no reason to say he does not, because that could potentially push away your audience. So if I'm Sony and I'm making a Venom movie and I want people to see this Venom movie, I'm not going to say that it's not connected to the Marvel Cinematic Universe. I'm going to have bits and pieces in the movie where things are open to interpretation, where it's possible that other superheroes do exist within this universe. I never flat out say, yeah, Iron Man was just flying by, or yeah, Tom Holland, Spider-Man. I don't even do that. I reference Spider-Man, and I move this movie to a different location, and maybe talk about things happening in New York. A whole bunch of, have a have a line like a whole bunch of freaks in New York, or, or I'm tired of all these super-powered people you know, in New York and, or the people are always destroying New York or whatever, you know, you do things like that. You don't have to straight up just say, <laughs> yeah, we're in the Marvel Cinematic Universe or no, we're not in the Marvel Cinematic Universe because you don't need to. And if I was Sony, I wouldn't. And is it fooling the audience? Yeah, because it, it hey, it may not be in the MCU. It, it may not be. I'm sorry. It might not be. But if I'm Sony, I ain't going to say that because because that could potentially push away my audience. But what I would do eventually is I would connect Tom Holland's Spider-Man with Tom Hardy's Venom. And I would do that by way of having a Venom sequel or whatever. Uh, and it eventually having Tom Holland appear in it. Or 
uh, think of the Venom movie is taking place at, I don't want to say the end, but that's the best way for, for it, for my point to be articulated. But like, if you have a, a long timeline, think of the Venom movie at the end and Spider-Man Homecoming, the new Spider-Man movie that we got uh, this year at the beginning. And like, as the Spider-Man movies come out, they'll eventually meet up with the Venom movie. You get what I'm saying? You get what I'm saying? But that doesn't mean that the the Venom movie is connected to the MCU. It just means that the Venom movie is connected to the Spider-Man films, which and the Spider-Man films are connected to the MCU. If you want to be confused, you can be. Uh, but I don't think it's that difficult to understand. I don't think so. I mean, it may not be. It, it might be, but I don't think it is that difficult to understand. And if I was Sony, like I said, <laughs> I ain't saying a word. <laughs> I ain't telling you nothing. No, 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 no. So then continuing the interview. The question is then, well, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Okay, so is Spider-Man in this movie? And then the answer is, we're making a Venom movie. We're making a Venom movie. Listen, Spider-Man more than likely will be referenced in the movie if he does not appear. He will more than likely be referenced in the film um, because it's Venom. You know, it's Venom. And they within this interview, we see or we hear, you know, that there is a good amount of care and respect toward this character. And they understand that they can listen. Y'all can't mess this up. Because if you mess this up, if you listen, I, I get I get real close to the microphone for you for this one. If you mess this up, I'm going to be very unhappy. I'm just going to be unhappy. I'm not going to come on. I'm just going to be unhappy, you know, I'm just going to be mad, I'm just going to be mad, but uh, they understand that, right, so they, they, they understand that the Venom character is, is, he came from Spider-Man, okay, he came from Spider-Man in the lore, in the comics, he came from Spider-Man, that is understood, all right, it is understood, so they're not going to just say, listen, Venom appeared, and and then Venom, God said, let there be light, and then Venom appeared. No, they're not They're not going to do that. They're going to more than likely say he came from Spider-Man, and, and Venom moved to San Francisco because Spider-Man and he had this truce. That's a, that, now, that's a potential route that they could take it. It could be something different where Spider-Man re- rejects the symbiote and Eddie Brock, it gets on Eddie Brock and he ends up going to San Francisco for some other reason. But I don't think they're going to do that. I think they're going to really stick with the truce idea and, and Spider-Man saying, get out of here. Just get out of here, man. And Venom going, fine. So I think they're going to go that route. Um, do I think Spider-Man will appear? I think it's possible. Uh, if he does appear, I don't think he's going to have Tom Holland's suit. I do think that if he is to speak, that... Tom Holland may voice him. I don't think you need to show Peter Parker's face, and I don't think they will show Peter Parker's face. So, again, if Spider-Man appears, it's not going to be a big thing. It's going to be uh, um, uh, just just us seeing him, you know? He's just going to pop up. Like, I'm Spider-Man, hi. Huh? Spider-Man. He may appear in the final fight. You know, I'm Spider-Man. Go fight the symbiotes. You fight the symbiotes with you, Venom. You know, that may be one thing that happens, but I don't think we're going to see like Spider-Man coming over, you know, taking off the mask and him hanging out with Eddie Brock or, or this being a Spider-Man versus Venom movie. I don't, I don't think that's going to happen. Um, in my, if you, if you like my story, if you don't know, I have my own Venom movie story on my YouTube channel, youtube.com slash Venom 2 million and <laughs> plug, 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 plug. Uh, I have, I made up a story and I basically talked about uh, well, the story started off with Spider-Man versus Venom, um, but this that story took place in New York. It didn't take place like in San Francisco, and it was it was a story of Venom trying to do good and Carnage being created, and and Venom having to fight Carnage, and um, yeah, it was that was that story. And Black Cat was in there, and Silver Sable was in there uh, because I I think that the possibility of them being in the Venom movie is still rather high because I think that that they're going to be connected. All of the, the Spider-Man movies are going to be connected. Um, yeah, 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, continuing the interview, then the question becomes, well, well uh, what about the ratings? So, like, are you guys, what do you, uh, what's going on? Well, that was actually the last question, but I'll, I'll, I'll connect that to what I'm about to say. You know, Tom Holland, Tom Holland, what? Tom Hardy. Tom Holland plays Spider-Man. Tom Hardy uh, is a person that is, he's so focused. He's such a great actor that Matt Tomic is praising him for that. And something that's mentioned is, and this is mentioned by the interviewer, uh, that Tom Hardy is not the type of actor to just say, I'm going to do this for the money. And Matt Tomic, he, he even acknowledges that. He's like, yeah, Tom Hardy is taking this incredibly seriously and he's challenging everything that we throw at him. Now, I don't know if that means that he's saying, OK, wait a minute, I can't do Tom Hardy's voice, but but I, I, OK, I can't. No, no, we're not going to do it that way. It, it, no, that's not Tom Hardy's voice, but it, I don't know if he's saying like, I don't know if he's meaning that he's going, no, we, we shouldn't do it like that because that doesn't make sense. And that's kind of a bad idea. Or if he or if Matt Tom meant it like he's each challenge that is like he's he's tackling each thing that we're throwing at him in terms of, hey, we're going to do this uh, with the character. The character is going to go through this emotion or this this traumatic event or he's going to feel this way about it. I don't know if I don't know if he meant like like Tom Hardy is a, is just 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 killing it you know that wonderful phrase that people use in terms of actors when actors are doing a great job oh he's killing it oh you're killing it oh you know i don't know if he means he's killing it or if he means like he's going a hey, uh matt listen <laughs> that's a bad idea like i don't know but regardless we really get the emphasis of this project being one of seriousness they're taking it seriously it's not a joke. It's serious because a lot of money is on the line here. A lot of money. All right. And if Sony gets a good Venom movie going, then Marvel's probably going to say, hey, hey, Sony Bear, Sony Boo. <laughs> so remember, we were talking about having a rated R, you know, Marvel thing going on. What if we incorporated that in the Marvel Cinematic Universe and then Sony goes, I mean, yeah, sure. Yeah, what what a, what a check bill? What is, what a check at? What what a money? <laughs> what a money at? <laughs> you know. So that's probably something that's in the works. And then the final question was, <laughs> and is this movie gonna be a rated R? And Matt Tomic responds with another suit answer. Uh, answer fit for a man wearing a suit. He says, "Listen, you can do this multiple ways. All right, you can do it. You can you could do it rated R. You could do it PG thirteen. And then the question is, so what are you guys gonna do? How are y'all gonna do it? He said, "But well, um, listen, we're gonna do it the right way now." Hold on. If we listen to the interview earlier in the interview earlier, uh, he mentioned, he said that this is a dark, real gritty. You know, they use the, we love those, those phrases, those action words, those key terms, gritty, dark, realistic, oh, humorous, you know. Um, people talked about the Amazing Spider-Man franchise and, and the words used to describe that franchise was dark and gritty, you know? Uh, so that doesn't necessarily mean that this Venom movie is going to be rated R, but I would place my money on the uh, rated R category. Yes, yes, I would, yes. I think that Deadpool... The success of Deadpool and Logan has really created a... Um, I want for Sony. They were like, listen, we want to make a rated R Venom movie. Why? Because we want some Deadpool money. Please, please just give us, give us some money. Please, please just want some, just want, I just want some money. So I think that's where they're going with it. Uh, more than likely we'll be rated R. And um, I think that the movie will be connected to the Spider-Man movies not necessarily the Marvel Cinematic Universe yet because it's more than likely going to be dependent on how the film does. Um, and if Marvel says, yeah, we'll take it, uh, if it's not already in there, because it could already be in there. It could. And we just don't know because how would we? We don't work 
we don't work for Sony. You know, as a matter as and, and it's funny as you would think that a lot of the people do. You think a lot of people like know everything that's going on, telling you, "Little Sony, you suck at everything you do," unless it's PlayStation and you're great at that. But you suck at everything else that you do. You know, that's what people love to say. Um, like they know everything that they do. Like they know everything that they do. They know everything. Um, but I don't think that um, Sony is going to phony it up. I think that they're leaving it on the table because it's possible that it could be in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. If it's not already, it's possible. Um, and if you say it, it isn't, then you more than likely will hurt your sales because people people may not go see this movie, especially if it ain't good, if it's, if it's confirmed not to be in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. So... Yes, <laughs> yes, yes, yes. And before I take my break, because we gonna have to take a break and talk to just just go a little bit to our to our to our sponsors, just a tad bit, just a tad bit. Before we go there, um, some information has come out about Riz Ahmed, and he's been cast in the Venom movie. In case you did not know, and people were assuming that he was going to be Cletus Cassidy, Carnage. Well, it's been confirmed, sort of a little bit confirmed, kind of confirmed. I mean. So it maybe maybe it depends on if you if you want to like say that oh yeah this person is reliable i mean i've gotten to a, a little squabble not a squabble it was just a kind of a conversation on twitter with this person and and uh i kind of questioned them um but i digress um, this person, his name is Atlanta Filming. He loves to take pictures around for things filming in Atlanta. And <laughs> that's great, you know, in case you didn't know that that was what the name meant. Um, but he took a picture of Riz Ahmed on the Venom movie set. And uh, he says, this is what happens when they walk out of the wrong door, side and behind view. Dr. Drake from hashtag Venom in costume. And he's wearing like kind of a suit. Um, and Dr. Drake apparently is probably going to be Dr. Carlton Drake. And this is the leader of the Life Foundation who is in the Lethal Protect, whoa, the Lethal Protector um, story arc. Uh, this is the comics from the 90s that I've talked about last week. Um, and he apparently, I don't know this, I didn't read the entire comic. Now, I do remember having a Lethal Protector comic, but I didn't have like the entire series. Uh, so, apparently... Dr. Carlton Drake is responsible for forcibly extracting five seeds from the Venom symbiote, who later become known as Agony, Phage, Riot, Lasher, and Scream. Um, so, apparently, Ahmed is playing Dr. Drake, which means he's more than likely going to be going to be appearing in some other Spider-Man movies. Which is something, you know, it's something, it's something, it's something. Because I, 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 like I said, I don't think that Sony is building this universe or or building a movie without having a universe. You know, I think that they really want to have a Spider-Man universe, whether it's connected to the Marvel Cinematic Universe or not. Um, and yeah, that's what I think. And I think that could also go into Matt Tomix being coy about whether or not this movie's in the MCU because he, he, it's going to be in the the SCU which Tom Holland's Spider-Man will be in as well but you guys don't know that yet you will you will and that again that's that's probably plan B if it doesn't end up being in the MCU then plan B is uh, is having the SCU the Spider-Man Cinematic Universe um, which is something they've been planning with the Amazing Spider-Man franchise but that you know crashed and burned because the universe said no you don't no you don't <laughs> Man, I'm making myself laugh. All right, all right, all right. So, that's where we are with all the Venom movie information. I'm excited for the Venom movie. I'm excited for the Venom movie. When we return, when we return, you may you may sit down and listen to the Star Wars talk. It ain't going to be too long because I ain't got too much to say about Star Wars Episode 8. 
but I got a little bit to say, and I got a little bit of information, because people been really just getting mad, they are pissed at Star Wars Episode 8, so I decided, I, maybe, I, maybe I'll talk a little bit about it, maybe I'll talk a little bit about it, you know, <laughs> alright guys, we'll be right back on BeMoreRadio.com, you're listening to the Venom 2 Million Show! Hi, this is Morgan Parker from the College for Creative Studies, and you're listening to Be More Radio. Ow! And we are back to the Venom 2 Million Show. I'm your host, Venom 2 Million, and welcome back. You're listening to the Venom 2 Million Show on BeMoreRadio.com, or you're watching it or listening on my YouTube channel. That's YouTube.com slash Venom 2 Million, if that's where you're listening. Guess what? You've got one more week. You've got one more episode. Then... I don't know what to tell you other than you're going to have to go to BeMoreRadio.com. You're going, you're going to have to go to BeMoreRadio.com to listen. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. Now, Star Wars Episode Eight came out last week and your boy saw it. Yes, I did. A lot of people saw it. I'm pretty sure everybody saw it. A lot of people saw the movie. Um, a lot of people like it. A lot of people don't. It's weird. Uh, and I went into the movie with this weird perception. I'm like, <laughs> I'm probably not going to like this movie that much. Like that, that was my thought. I went in like, I'm probably not going to like it that much. It's going to probably be all right. Uh, but now I'll go see it. You know, I went to see it with my, with my friend. Uh, we saw it and then we left the theater and we were like, yo, that was not bad. Like, I liked that movie a lot more than I thought I would. And I thought I was not going to like it, but I liked it. I liked it a lot. Now. With that being said, was it some stupid parts? Absolutely. Absolutely. Yes, absolutely. Do do I want to spoil it? Do I even want to? I'm not going to spoil it right now, but do believe that that one part with that explosion and oh my gosh, I said, what? I I said, I I verbally out loud said, you lost me. Like it was... (laughs) I couldn't believe that they even did. <laughs> what did she do? What? <laughs> that was really dumb. That explosion and I, I, you lost me. And then in the beginning, something happened. And I'm like, wait a minute. But, but, but so we can breathe. So, and there's gravity. Wait, what? <laughs> okay. 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 I reloaded. I reloaded. I'm like, all right. But when that explosion happened, you lost me. You lost me right there. And then the, what happened, I was like, no, abs- absolutely not. That is not right. It is not right. I don't care what what the past, the lore, I don't know. Again, I'm not going to spoil it. I'm not going to spoil it, it. But I will tell you, wrong. It was wrong. What they, what they did, they was wrong. Okay. Uh, other than that, though, the movie was good. The ending was all right. Uh, the twist, it was a twist in the film when something happened to someone uh, unexpectedly, and a lot of people are pissed about that. They're like, no, you don't do, no. Where did that even, he, what, what, but if the setup, and, and and for me, it was like, dang, they just completely said, abs- they, they just did what they did with that. Again, not spoiling it, but they did what they did with that. And I was like, how did you just do what you did with that? Goodness, how did you just do that? I mean, hey, that's that's something. But dang, I, and and like, how? Like, he didn't, you didn't know? Like, what did I, I okay, <laughs> okay, I'll just, I'll just sit myself back down and eat my popcorn because some, this movie is just going crazy. It's going great, and then there was a at the end where 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 so and so did do to do to so and so, and they had this look on their face like, wait a minute, wait a minute, hold on, what? First of all, why did you just do what you do? Why did you do what you do? Because what you just did, you wasn't supposed to do. Because I was trying to do what I was gonna do, but you didn't did what you gonna do, and that stopped me from doing what I'm gonna do. And then you just did something else. And the look on their face when they, when that person did what they did to the other person was was just like, no, no, I'm not supposed to be. No, no. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, now, I guess I am going to have to get into some spoilers because this this article that I'm about to read is um, 
which is going to negate everything that I just went through without trying to spoil. Um, so if you haven't seen Star Wars, uh, The Last Jedi, which I'm sure you have, but if you didn't see it, then, you know, you should probably mute your Bamor radio, you know, mute it and come back and give me like five minutes. Just, just five minutes. All right. Just five. Okay. Are you gone? I'm going to let you go. Okay. We're going to, going to give some time to leave. Okay. I know I'm still talking, so that's making you stay, but just leave. Okay. Go, go. Five, four, three, two, one. All right. First of all, uh, Snoke died and that, that was like, whoa, that's what I was talking with the whoa. Like, did they just really do that? Wow. And then at the beginning, I'm talking about whether the, the girl, um, Rose's sister was trying to drop the stuff and she's dropping the bombs, but like there's, there's, it's open. So like, you can't, you can, you can breathe in space and, and you're not cold and what? And then the explosion with, with my, my girl, uh, General Leia and she just boom, boom, bye bye. And she's dead. I'm like, okay, that's a good way to kill her. That's really good. And then she all of a sudden wakes up and I'm like, absolutely not. You lost me. And then at the end where, where Rose kisses, <laughs> she, she gets Finn. Finn looked like a. Wait a minute. No. Why did you no? And then why did you just save me? No. No. And then Ray. Ray looked and when she saw Finn helping Rose or or putting the blanket on Rose. Ray straight up had the look of no. <laughs> it was just and I was like Ray, I'm with you because I was I was rooting for you, girl. I, Finn and Ray should end up together, not Poe and Ray. No, no, have Poe be with be with Rose. You know, Finn and Ray all day. That's what I want. They like each other, man. That's not fair. But we'll see what happens in episode nine. But Snoke is dead. Snoke died like so sad. that. How did you do that? Like you just did it. You just killed him. And Ryan Johnson is that? That's not his name. I just made up. That's not the man's name. Ryan Johnson. Who is it? It is his name. Ryan Johnson. That's the director of Star Wars. I knew what I was talking about. Uh, Ryan Johnson. He had an interview, and this interview was basically like, so was Snoke just a red herring for a larger threat? And Ryan Johnson replied with the following. He said, well, I don't know about red herring, but he is definitely, okay, Snoke's place in this movie came about largely from me figuring out Kylo's arc. What Kylo's arc was going to be in this movie? In my mind, uh, what I wanted to do with Kylo was to make him was to take him and basically knock out the kind of shaky foundation from under his feet and build him by the end of the movie into someone who's standing up as a credible but complex villain. He's taken the reins, basically. He's no longer a Vader pretender. He's somebody who's actually going to be going into the next movie as someone who's taken control and taken the reins of everything. And then Johnson, you know, continued with talking about killing Snoke was his idea. And he says that he said, I'm just going to read the quote. He said, that led very quickly to that idea because then you get to, okay, you have Kylo there at the end. What is Snoke's place in all this? And do you really want Kylo to be that, to be that, but with an emperor figure over him? And if it is that, then suddenly your options are much more familiar going into the next movie. So it led to this notion of, okay, so that means we're going to have to have this dramatic moment where Snoke goes and he's talking about dying. And that means that Kylo can then ascend, actually ascend. And then that means that all bets are off for the next movie and we can't go into it with the assumption of what's going to happen because we've taken away the familiar element, which I think is powerful. And ultimately, Snoke was not built up in the last movie. He was built up with fan theories since the last movie. The truth is, Snoke has a couple of very brief scenes in the last film. And I love fan theories, by the way the way i don't want to just poo poo them i think that's an important part of star wars fandom and i think it's really fun to think about where these people come from but the truth is in terms of snoke's actual place in this movie it's much more similar to the emperor's place in the original trilogy it's not about where he comes from it's not about his backstory he is the guy behind the guy and i think he plays out his part in this movie as is appropriate and I 100% agree with him. I think that the 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 handling, the way that they killed Snoke was, I mean, it was it was 
it was pretty lame. It was lame. Um, <laughs> but I think that by killing him, it does remove that. I know what's going to happen. You know, people went into this movie. I know what's going to happen. And you didn't. And people are kind of mad about that. Like, honestly, a lot of the anger that comes from the movie is, a few, you know, a few things don't make sense. But but a lot of the things that have happened in the movie, nobody was expecting. People weren't expecting what happened in the movie to happen, which I think is good. You know, Luke doing what he did, you know, doing the the projection of himself and then dying like that was that was cool. You know, Luke being a person that does not want to be a part of the Jedi or have anything to do with anything anymore. I think that's pretty cool too, you know. I think that I think they took some really good choice. They made really good choices and took really good chances with these characters and with the story. They took it to places that people weren't expecting it to be taken to. And, you know, that's going to piss some people off. And I think that's all right. You know, forget it. Piss them off. They mad. <laughs> you mad. That's your choice. That's your fault. Like, um, the movie made a lot of money. And the next movie is going to make even more money. And Star Wars is a profitable thing. And I don't think the movie is as bad as people say it is. I do think the movie has some issues. It's got a lot of issues. And it's going to piss a lot of people off. And it did piss a lot of people off. And some people, because they're so pissed off, think this is the worst Star Wars movie ever. And, and you know, it's a lot of things, you know. But I think that the fact that it is so divisive in the sense of you have the fans that are hardcore fans that just hate it, that just hate it. And then you have the people that love it. I think that that says something. I think that that really does say something where where and I'm, I'm not saying it's a good thing that it is and I'm not, I'm not i'm not saying it's saying yeah this is great you know but i i think that the fact that you have a group of people that love it and a group of people that hate it um that means something and it has left an effect on the audience which forms of art are supposed to do and the movie is a form of art and it definitely left an effect um so yeah if you ask me, I thought the movie was all right. I enjoyed it. I enjoyed it. And um, I'm looking forward to the next one. I'm not looking forward to that Han Solo. Not at all. You don't You don't need to do a Han Solo. You don't need to do... No, thank you. You don't need to do the the uh, little little prequel movies that tell the stories of, of people. No, I'm fine. I'm 100% fine. Uh, and also, I'm just going to say this right now. Um, Finn is Lando Calrissian's uh, son, and uh, Ray. I do think she may not be connected to anyone, which is all right with me. I mean, she could be uh, Ben Solo's b- sister, but I don't think it's necessary. Um, and I also don't think that you know her being in the story is for no reason as well. Um, and I think that's really going to pan out at the end of this trilogy, meaning at the, like with the next movie, when it sets up the fact that there's going to be a different fight, because I think they're going to get rid of the notion of light and dark and good and bad. And I, I thought they were kind of going to go that route within this movie, but they didn't. They touched on it a little bit, but I think they're really going to go that route in the next movie where they're going to get rid of this good and bad. And it's going to, you're going to really see that. No, no, no. It's different perspectives. And with the next trilogy, it's going to really showcase different perspectives. And it's going to be somebody's trying to do something and someone else is trying to do something and they're going to butt heads with that on a larger level, you know. Um, Yeah, that's what I think they're going to do. I don't think it's like I wouldn't be surprised if maybe they started in the next movie where it it becomes the line becomes blurred with who the protagonist and antagonist is like. For example, it's it may be a little bit difficult to do it with the next movie, but for example, after this trilogy, right, you have a person that wants to liberate 
I don't know, a planet or whatever. There's a planet filled with uh, uh, animals that, you know, the animals are being forced to produce milk. All right. This is a really bad example, but whatever. The animals are being forced to produce milk. Right. Um, So they want to liberate these animals. So then you have the perspective of the person that is in charge of these animals that is forced that are forcing these animals to produce the milk. And what if they're forcing the animals to produce the milk because the milk that they produce is a cure for some kind of disease or some something like that? And then it becomes this fight of you shouldn't be forcing these animals to do whatever they're doing. And then the other person is like, but what they're doing is saving millions of people so it's it becomes that struggle of what is actually right and what is actually wrong you know and is there a middle ground and i and I, that's just an example but i think it, it'll be on a much larger scale you know and that's where i think they're going to take the star wars mythos and i think if they do take it there it could be really interesting um yeah and I, I, I just I like those type of stories where you don't have a clear cut good and bad guy, whereas somebody because in real life, people don't wake up and say, I'm evil. No, I'm I'm going to destroy the galaxy. You know, people don't really do that. People wake up and say, I, I'm going to do this because this is how I feel because of this. And yes. And other people go, ah, that hurt me. Uh, you know, it, it, it's it's a matter of perspective, and I think that that should really be emphasized, and I think it will be emphasized in the latter um, half of the trilogy or series, whatever you want to call it. You know, yeah. <laughs> so, with all that being said, that wonderful goodness that I didn't gave you on the Star Wars stuff. <gasps> We will return to the Venom to Me show on BMARRadio.com. We're going to take a quick break. We'll be right back. Hey, this is Crystal from Renaissance High School. Go follow, like, and add us on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, and Snapchat at BMAR Radio. Ow! And welcome back to the Venom 2 Million show. I am that one that I just... Named the show after Venom Two Million. Hi, welcome. Uh, before we get into some game stuff, I really just want to talk about this wonderful information, this wonderful news that came out Friday at around two o'clock. Well, it started a little bit earlier than that. It had been happening um, since the eighteenth of December. Uh, Bitcoin was going down. Baby, it was going down. I'm about to read this article from lifehacker.com because it's so funny. Um, it's not funny for those that invested in it, but it is funny for me being a person that did not. I read it. Here we go. After rising from under $1,000 to almost $20,000 in the past year, Bitcoin crashed spectacularly this morning, dropping to as low as $11,000 per Bitcoin before rebounding to a little over $13,000. The news is plenty of cryptocurrency investors spooked. It even knocked popular, popular, popular digital currency exchange Coinbase offline temporarily due to an increase in activity. Listen, if you invested $20,000 in something, and then all of a sudden that thing went down, it just dropped and said, oh, because I mean, it, it, it had been going down since the 18th of December. Uh, it began going down, it, you know, it would go up, but it was steady going down. But the morning of Friday, the morning of Friday, that thing said, no, yeah. it fell. It fell all the way down to $11,000. If you invested $20,000, you are pissed. You are pissed. Um, and again, I've been talking to some people about it. I'm like, yo, listen, I don't trust it. You know, I don't trust it. And I'm not an investor and I, I don't know all about cryptocurrencies, but I do remember like 
eight years ago, first hearing about Bitcoin and Dogecoin and Ethereum and all of that. And uh, I thought it was interesting, but, you know, I never looked into it. And I'm still and I looked into it a little bit more because, you know, twenty thousand dollars. You definitely did catch my attention, but I wasn't going to invest money in it. You know, I was not going to invest money in any of it because I don't know much about it. So if I was to do some research, I still may not invest money in it. I would, what I would do is I would mine. I would definitely get me a rig to mine, you know, but I'm not going to put my money into it. And even if I do get a rig, that'd be putting my money into it. But you, you know what I mean? You know what I mean? People that invested buttloads, boatloads of money in Bitcoin and have lost a lot of that money. I'm sorry. Uh, and some people are calling those investors idiots. And I don't think they're idiots. I think that they, you know, just hopped on the bandwagon. Um, you know, but all good things must come to an end. And this may not be the end. You know, I definitely, if I was an investor, I would be like, yeah, it is the fit is in for me. But, you know, some people, they are going to stick through it. You know, come back come back um so we'll see how that continues what continues if it continues what even happens next uh and i just i feel really bad for the people that lost their money because twenty thousand dollars like you just lost ten thousand dollars um and that's that's for me at least a lot of money because I ain't got much. And when you ain't got much and you're losing ten thousand, that listen, that's not pocket change for me. Okay, ten thousand dollars. Do you know what I could do with ten thousand dollars? I could do a whole lot more than I can do with how much I got now. And that amount right now, let me tell you how much it is. <clears throat> that's how much money I got in my yes, yes. You what you thought? You thought I was? What you think? I you thought I was? I don't know what you thought, but I was telling you, that's the amount of money I have in my bank account right now, in my wallet right now, okay? So $10,000, losing that, <laughs> no, 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 all right? No. Okay. Now we're going to shift on over to some video game goodness. Video game stuff ain't really, it ain't too much, you know, happening, because it's the end of the year, you know, the the VGAs were... Two weeks ago, that's gone. You know, ain't much news really coming out. You know, it's not it's not much news. But what I do want to talk about, I want to talk a little bit about the the wonderful. If you don't know what this is, then I'm about to educate you. Listen, I love the Telltale games. I love the Telltale games. Not all of them, some of them. I love the Walking Dead Telltale games. I love the Wolf Among Us, and um, I find myself really, really enjoying the Batman Telltale game. Like the season one of Batman Telltale, it was yeah, and it was all right. You know, it was all right. But this season two i am loving it i absolutely love the the bruce wayne batman contrast thing like that is so sweet i'm not gonna spoil it but what i will say is if you have not played it you should play it and then the integration of the batman villains and their the way that they're being portrayed like the this iteration of these villains is so cool to me uh, they're they're people, you know. They're not they're character. They are characters, but they're people, and they they come off in a different light than what we've seen before, which I really like. I love the interpretation of these characters of Harley Quinn of the Joker. Like the Joker, he is really cool. Like I love his character. I love the Joker's character, um, and I I like the freedom that you that the player is given while playing the Telltale Batman game. Like you your your choices really do affect different things. Like there are people that are in different predicaments at the end of episode three than comparison to my ending of episode three. Like they're in a different predicament. They have done different things. They have different relationships with different people because of what they've done. And the past Telltale games, you know, it's all built about this game is tailored around your decisions and your actions and choices will impact the, the game or whatever. No, it didn't. 
No, it didn't. You just could choose whether or not you was going to say F you to this person or have a nice day. And that didn't mean anything. Like now, if you say F you to this person, <laughs> that's going to mean something in comparison to saying have a good day. You know. So I appreciate that 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 depth, the depth in that game. Um, and I'm really looking forward to episode four. I don't know when it's coming. When is it coming, Tales Hell? Because I want, I want to play it. You know, I was hoping to play it during the uh, Christmas break, but looks like we're not getting it. Um, so January, we're probably going to get it. And I'm just really looking forward to it. And I would love to be sent an extra code or, or code early to play it. You know, I already got the season pass. You can just send me it early, Telltale. Just, just send it, send it my way. Send it my way. Speaking of other game stuff, I've been a big fan of the Resident Evil 7 game. Let me tell you, Resident Evil 7. All right. This is my first Resident Evil. All right. This is my first Resident Evil. Now, before you you get mad at me, listen, I ain't play them. I, I just didn't want to. I did not want to play them. Listen, they weren't good. In my opinion, they didn't look good. They didn't pique my interest. But this one. Oh, my God. I love Resident Evil 7. I got over the summer. I got this uh, Resident Evil 7 and Outlast over the summer. And let me just tell you, those games are exquisite. They are great. Outlast has its own story and its own mechanics. But Resident Evil 7 is a game that, that like, I... It's one of the best games of 2017, in my opinion. It's one of the best. Like, the the uh, the detail in terms of not just the character models but when it comes to the gameplay like you don't know if what you're experiencing is a cutscene and i just find that so refreshing the animations the game is it's so refreshing so when i beat it you know what i was doing i was looking for that dlc that dilk and 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 I, I played the band footage one and the band footage two and apparently the new the, the not a hero DLC was supposed to come out for free and I had season pass so it didn't matter because I was gonna get it regardless um, and I was waiting I'm like okay when is not for not a hero DLC coming out and I'm on YouTube and I'm on Google and I'm looking it up I'm looking it up everywhere and I can't find it and it's, it's making me mad and then I found out it was delayed I'm like oh no it was delayed ah well guess what y'all guess what it came out december 12th i believe it came out and let me just tell you i played the not a hero dlc and i played the end of zoe dlc and let me tell you starting with that not a hero man man oh man it was so first first of all great to be back playing that game i'd been playing the uh ethan must die uh dlc and i've been trying to beat that um and I beat it. My plan was to beat it before the December 12th date came because I wanted to have that out of the way before I played the other DLCs. And I would beat it. It, it, was, it was a grind. It, was, it, took, it took some time. It took some time. That game was trying my patience and trying my nerves. But uh, I eventually beat it. Um, and when I got to that end, or not, a, why do I keep wanting to say end of watch? That's no, I'm like, what? Uh, but when I got to the Not a Hero DLC, I was so excited to be back and to have a different experience because Chris Redfield playing as him, he's so different from the other characters, from Ethan, from Mia, from Zoe. Um, I'm spoiling the game partially, not really, actually. I mean, you can play the game if you haven't played it. I'm not going to get into the story or anything, but the it was just so refreshing to play this game and to play it from another perspective from a different perspective which made the end of zoe dlc even better because that was a game that literally did not require weapons like you could get weapons but it it didn't require it joe baker would go around with his fist and i felt that was amazing the mechanics the first person mechanics uh using them fists it was amazing oh my gosh i loved it walking up to people pow molly wop hit him with a left hit him with a right like it was i just loved that i loved it man like capcom yo 
that is a, y'all did an excellent job with Resident Evil 7. Y'all did an excellent job. I can't think of a game right now that is topping that on my my game my game of the year ideas right now. I can't. I haven't played Uncharted 4 yet. Um, I'll be playing that hopefully before the end of the year uh, because I I got a I'm, I have the Uncharted collection. I have one, two, and three. And I have four here as well, but I haven't played four because I need to beat one, two, and three. And I'm playing one right now, and that game is hard, dog. That game is hard. I don't even know why they did that. It's, it's hard. But uh, I'm looking forward to getting on that, that two, then getting on three, then getting on four. I have already beat Last of Us, and I'm just looking forward to playing Uncharted 4. You know, uh, And I'm, I'm also playing Until Dawn, which is a PS4 game, and that game has to do with... Uh, uh, you're a group of of teenagers and you know they ain't teenagers all right they 34 35 year olds and they all playing people that just got in the, in the college but they don't look it all right you you can't tell me that those people in until dawn are supposedly freshmen in college no they're not i was a freshman in college i was a freshman all right I know what I looked like. I knew what fresh men looked like. I am now a junior in college, and I know what freshmen look like, and they don't look like that. Okay? They don't look like that. But apparently, in the game, you are fresh men in college, and you go to this this uh, cabin, um, not in the woods, but in the mountains, in the woods, sort of, and uh, there's this killer that starts hunting y'all down. And you as the player, you make decisions, make choices that will lead to either the deaths of the people or them surviving. You can play the game and have everybody survive uh, or, you know, you can have everybody die. It's all dependent on your choices, what you do. So far, I'm people have been dying uh, for me. Um, so my second playthrough, I'm going to try to make sure that nobody dies because people are dying on my first playthrough. But it's a game that I, I'm... I'm having a good time playing. I'm also playing Kingdom Hearts 1. I have Kingdom Hearts 1.5 and 2.5 HD Remix. And uh, Kingdom Hearts 1 is a trip down memory lane, man. If y'all didn't know, that's my favorite. Kingdom Hearts is my favorite game series. Like, I love Kingdom Hearts. I love it. Um, And I'm just having this trip down memory lane. and I'm just remembering the joy and the amount of fun that I had playing Kingdom Hearts. And also, just how hard that game is and how hard games were back in the past in general like games were hard man what happened everybody got soft like i I guess it also like you when playing kingdom hearts like you feel the love and the heart and the care in the game like it's not a shell of of an experience just begging for money it's a it's an experience that is built with care and I, I felt that with Resident Evil 7 as well. It's an experience built with care. It's not just, hey, we're going to do this for money. It's like, yeah, we're going to do this because this is what we care about. This is what we want to do. This is what we want to show. This is the story that we want to tell. This is the experience that we want the, the, the gamer to have, the consumer to have. And it was it's just so great feeling that again, playing a game that I played at such a young age and and that game not being good because of the age that I was when I played it, but just it being a good game. Like that is amazing and I'm having such a great time playing it and I'm also getting really pissed playing it because it's so dang hard and I hope Kingdom Hearts 3 ain't ain't easy please like I'm watching the Kingdom Hearts 3 gameplay and I see Sora when he fighting the big fat dudes like he hitting them in the front of the stomach and they, they getting hurt and I'm like no that's not how it was you always had to attack from the back because and so so please please don't make Kingdom Hearts 3 be no easy game please 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 Please. But yeah, that's really it, man. Uh, PUBG. I'm playing that on the Xbox One, um, and it's a fun game. It's a fun experience. It, it needs some work. Like y'all, hey, y'all mess. <laughs> that's glitchy. It's all glitched up and glitchified. And I'm I'm playing on Play-Doh. You know, like where where the where the where the map at? The map where the map at? This is, I'm, I'm, on, I'm on Play-Doh. I'm on I'm on gray. <laughs> I'm on gray matter. <laughs> But yeah, so that's really what I've been playing. You know, that's that's the game stuff I've been playing, y'all. That's what I've been playing. 
<laughs> so, it's that time of the day where I got to say, have a good day. Because Venom to Me and the Venom to Me show is going off. Guys, we wrapping it up, y'all. I want to thank y'all for tuning in to the Venom to Me and show on BeMoreRadio.com. You can check me out on all my social medias. It's Venom to Me and on Facebook, Venom to Me and on the YouTube, Venom to Me and on the Instagram, and Venom 2 Million on Twitter. If you didn't get what I just did there, I had a, fl- I had a little bit of reflection there because it's the N O M. The number two, then M I L L I O N on Twitter because somebody took Venom two six zeros because because I don't know why would you do that? You did it on PSN as well. Why why would you why 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 would you do that? It's not it's not cool. It's not cool. But yeah, you can also check me out on youtubecom slash Venom two million in which I talk about a whole bunch of stuff, a whole bunch of stuff, a whole bunch of stuff. Uh, Venom two million YouTube channel is gonna be ramping up soon. It's gonna be ramping up. Did you guys hear? If you didn't, if you don't know, now you know. As always, I thank you all for tuning in. Episode two is down. I'll see you next week, y'all. Have a good one. Peace out. Peace. Shout out to my man Corey for the music too. <laughs> <laughs>